Oh, hey guys. So, get everything set up here. Apologize for the appearance today. This is kind of what you have today. Um, I was going to spruce things up, and then I thought, nah, never mind. Um, because, you know, it's real life, and this is what happens. Sometimes we stay in our workout attire all day long. Uh, I did. It did work out uh, today, a long time ago. And I've just been doing things since, so I haven't really had the opportunity to change out of my attire. Uh, and I might actually go to the gym again um, to do something different. So we'll see. I just did Pilates this morning, um, a reformer Pilates class. So it wasn't, you know, I didn't get my heart rate up or anything like that. It was really just kind of like, it's a lot of stretching and relaxing, a lot of core work. But um, so I may or may not join the spousal unit at the gymnasium in a little bit. Just really depends on how I feel right now or afterwards. Okay, so today we are going to talk about the difference between smoothies and juicing and determine, you know, is there one better than the other? Um, if you haven't checked out the blog yet, I put the blog, um, I never know what to call these, notes, the sidebar, the comment section, the, you know, the area that you read, what the heck this thing is about. The blog is there. Um, so if you haven't read the blog yet, I would check it out. And I always say check it out because sometimes I just kind of hit on the finer points of the blog. I don't always talk about everything that's in the blog. So I might kind of gloss over something um, that is really interesting to you or applies to your specific situation um, that you'll be able to find more information about in the blog. And this specific one, there are um, two links at the bottom for some various juices or smoothies um, that came from a colleague. So definitely go check those out um, and see... Uh, you know, if you like them, give them a try because every juice or smoothie yields a different result. Okie dokie. So let's, I apologize for all the forehead when I look down. It is what it is. It's kind of what I was born with, unfortunately. Um, okay, so let's talk food first. So nothing replaces food. So uh, not even supplements. Um, Supplements are to supplement a diet, not to replace it. Um, and the same thing with juicing and smoothing. So nothing, juicing and smoothing, we'll call it smoothing because that's what comes out. So juicing and smoothies, uh, food and juices or smoothies are not the same. Yes, they yield the same type of nutrients, but uh, as far as our body is concerned, food is most important first all the time. Um, because digestion starts in the mouth, and so when we're chewing our food, the chewing action helps the um, glands in the mouth to uh, release saliva, and saliva has important digestive enzymes in it, and that's where we start to break down the food before it heads south to the belly. Um, when we're doing, so just one con off the bat for both juices and smoothies, is we're not chewing when we're drinking those, so we're not starting the initial stage of digestion in the mouth. So that's kind of one downside. So food first, food matters first. Food helps to signal the stomach. Once we start chewing, it signals the stomach to start releasing, you know, hydrochloric acid so that we can start churning and getting, uh, you know, uh, pathogens off the food and we can start doing what we're supposed to do. So sometimes we kind of bypass that action when we're doing smoothies and juices. Um, the main difference between smoothies and juices is fiber. That's all it really comes down to. Um, one is blended and one is mashed, masticated, centrifugal juice. All it is is juice left over. There are people that have their preferences. Um, there are people that prefer juices. They say that uh, nutrient-wise they're superior than, than smoothies. And some people say, no, smoothies are superior-wise nutrient with more nutrient value. Um, the reality of it is, is it's just what we think. There's really no studies on smoothies or juices. There's no studies, scientific studies, that say that juices a day are going to, you know, cure cancer or whatever ailment out there. Um, there's a lot of anecdotal stories, but no actual scientific studies on the benefits of either of these. Um, and at the end, I'll give you my opinion. Um, for those of you joining the first time, this is, uh, I don't know why I said this is. That's not even what I was going to say. So those of you joining me for the first time, um, my name is Sunny Brigham. I'm a board-certified clinical and integrative nutritionist. Sorry, I set my glass down pretty hard there. 
Um, I have a master's of science in clinical and integrated nutrition, and this is what I do. If you have com um, comments, if you have questions while I am talking, you can go ahead and type them out, and then I check periodically, and I will answer your questions for you. This is what you get if you've joined me for the first time. I am all over the place. That's just how it is. Okay, so let's talk smoothies. Um, and quite honestly, if you were to Google either smoothies or juices, you're going to get a shit ton of results back on which one is superior and which one's better. And you're going to get a whole bunch of recipes for them as well. Um, I think the appeal to smoothies is that they're quick, easy, they can act as a meal replacer, um, and you can kind of drink it on the go. So if you're short on time first thing in the morning, you want to have a smoothie for breakfast, it takes five minutes to put everything in the blender, empty it into a cup, and then you're in the car. Um, juices take a little more time um, to get the juice out, you know, whether you're using a masticating juicer or a centrifuga juicer, it just takes a little more time, a little more prep action. Um, and sometimes the yield is a little disappointing, especially if you're not using some cucumber as a base. So let's talk about the pros of smoothies. Um, one of the main pros is that it is, they're pre-digested. And that means that the food's already partially broken down. Obviously the blender did that. So that's what our mouth would start doing that action, but we've taken that step out by having the blender start to pre-digest our food for us. Um, for individuals that have digestion and absorption issues, sometimes this can be beneficial. Um, and then you'll hear me say in a little bit that maybe it's not beneficial. Um, so for people that have gut issues or digestion and absorption problems, sometimes having the pre-digested meal can actually help you absorb the nutrients a little bit more. Um, it's a super, super, super easy way to get leafy greens in. Most people use kale or spinach in their smoothies. Um, as it's just, I mean, most people aren't going to sit down and eat two cups of salad and go, hmm, this is yummy. But you can certainly throw it in your smoothie, mask it with some berries and some fruit, and then you're able to get your greens in that way. Um, so it is a super easy way to get your greens in. If you make it with water, which a lot of people do, um, eight to 10 ounces of water, it will count towards your daily water intake. Um, I have a lot of clients that struggle getting their water in, and so having a smoothie will count towards it. Some people like to use milk, some people like to use nut milk, some people like to use water. I actually use a little bit of combination of both. I'll use nut milk and then I will top it off with some water just to reduce the thickness so I can drink it a little bit better. Um, smoothies maintain their fiber. So this is one area that they kind of beat out juices on is they maintain their fiber so that um, when you're consuming it, you're still getting all the benefits of fiber as if you were eating the food. We need fiber for proper digestion. We need uh, fiber for healthy colon. Um, we need fiber to help keep our cholesterol levels in check. So there's a lot of benefits to fiber and smoothies helps to retain the fiber um, in the foods. And then you can always add protein and fat to your smoothies, make it nice and well-rounded and you got a meal in a glass. So some cons, and this is where I contradict myself, is that if you have digestive issues, sometimes a large amount of liquid can be disrupting to the gut. So it's really an individual basis. So some people that have gut problems can have a smoothie and have no problems with it. And some people, it's just too much liquid, too much food in the stomach and the digestive tract at one time that it really causes some issues. So it's really a case-by-case -case basis, trial and error. You've got to figure out if it's going to be good for you or if it's not going to be good for you. Um, if you are not watching what you put in that blender, it can end up being super high in calories. So the typically the smoothie that I make ends up being about 450 to 500 calories. Um, and I'll give you the recipe in a minute, but um, that's pretty par for the course for most smoothies, especially if you're using like a nut milk as a base or you're adding a healthy fat to it. Um, so they're not, you know, a low calorie meal. They are, uh, you know, they can be moderate to high calorie if you're not watching what you're putting in there. Um, and then again, a downside is you are not chewing. So you're not releasing the saliva that your body needs. And so you're not eventually down the way releasing all the digestive enzymes that you need. So it can be beneficial. It cannot be beneficial. It's one of those things that we don't really know because we haven't done any studies on them. Um, 
Smoothies aren't for everybody. I know some people that absolutely hate smoothies. They say, nope, not my thing. I don't like it. And some people swear by it. They love it. They have one every morning. Um, they like to put, you know, lots of vegetables in it. And it's really, like I said, it's personal choice. Um, when it comes to smoothies, and this is slightly different than juices, so we'll kind of talk about it. When you're making your smoothies, you should really have like a one for one. So for every one vegetable you put in, you can have a fruit with it. Whereas juices, it's going to be a little bit different. So my go-to smoothie recipe is I'll put in eight ounces of unsweetened almond milk. Um, and then I put two like big handfuls of spinach or kale. Um, I usually drop a banana in there. I'll put in a half a cup to a cup of frozen berries, two tablespoons of ground flaxseed for the fat and for extra fiber. And um, what else do I put in there? Oh, I usually put in whatever protein I have on hand. Um, and then, oh, like I had one earlier today and I put in a scoop of dehydrated greens. So I got some extra greens in there as well. So I got three servings of greens and then two servings of fruit in my smoothie today. It was too much for me. I couldn't finish it all. The, uh, you know, that guy that lives with me, he had to finish the rest of it. Um, but that's kind of like my go-to. I like to keep it simple. Um, most people, that's typically the recipe I give to my clients. Most people like it. Um, a lot of people are afraid they're going to be able to taste the greens. And I promise you the banana masks most of it. So you might feel like the remnants in your mouth, like if you didn't blend up the kale well enough or the spinach or whatever, you might feel it in your mouth, but you're not really going to taste it. Um, and then that's kind of how I make my smoothies. So instead of ground flaxseed, I'm a big fan of that, but you can use avocados. A lot of people like peanut butter or almond butter. Um, any of those are good healthy fats as well. The upside to flaxseed is that they're kind of a one for one. So for every gram of carb, there's a gram of fiber. So the net grams or net carbs is zero for people that watch carbs. Um, let's see. Okay. So dehydrated greens. Melissa said dehydrated greens. Tell me more. They're not that exciting, I promise you. Oh, let me grab the ones I have. I'll show you. Usually I use, oh, I have another one. Let me grab those. So usually I use um, the, oh, right here, it's the Superfood Greens. Uh, Amazing Grass makes it. So this is usually the one that I use, um, this guy right here, if you can see it. Um, I don't actually use this one because of the detox and digest. So it's got um, something in it that really aggravates my uh, small intestine. And so I was using this for a while and then I stopped, but the plain um, Amazing Grass Green Superfood is usually the one that I will utilize. And if you read this, so it's got wheatgrass, barley grass, alfalfa, spinach, spirulina, chlorella, broccoli, um, and then a bunch of fibers and things like that. So it's kind of like a serving of greens. And then this is the one, so I just got this one. I can get it straight, there you go. Um, I just picked this one up. It was ridiculously expensive. Um, and I like this one because of all the extra stuff in it. So it's got a stragalus root for immune support. Um, it's got a lot of adaptogens in it, which is good for stress reduction, helping the body deal with stress, things like that. Um, let's see. It also has, uh, it's got flaxseed in it. It adds some flaxseed for the fiber. So one scoop of this has, if it's going to tell me, two grams of fiber. Um, it's got some liver support. So it's got silly, uh, milk thistle, dandelion root, burdock root, things that really help the liver do what it's supposed to do. And then it's got some digestive enzymes in it, which I need, and then probiotics, which I'm not a huge fan of greens having probiotics in them. Um, but for the most part, it's okay. It's not my favorite. I've only had a couple of scoops in it, and I'm, I'm not sold on it. But I know some people love it. Anyway, so I like to add some greens to my smoothies. Um... Okay, so let's talk about juices. 
So there's a lot of information on the healing powers of juices that are out there on the internet. If you've ever seen the documentary, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, you know that this man went on a 30-day juice cleanse and lost a bunch of money. I was going to say money. <laughs> lost a bunch of weight and kind of reversed some uh, autoimmune condition that he had. Um, I... I am a fan of juices. Like I said, I've juiced in the past. On occasion, I'll have a juice. I'm not anti-juice by any means, but there is like zero evidence on the benefits of juicing out there. If you want to make a juice and you feel good about your daily juice, by all means, do that. Um, but quite honestly, we don't really know how juices work. You know, in theory, we think, okay, well, we're getting all the juice out of these vegetables and a little bit of fruit. So we must be getting, you know, very concentrated forms of nutrients. So a lot of the vitamins and minerals. Um, but we don't really know how much vitamins and minerals is in the juice of the vegetable versus the flesh of the vegetable. So when you're juicing, you are having none of the flesh. Um, so if you take a cucumber, we know the nutrient profile of a cucumber, but we don't know the nutrient profile of the juice of the cucumber versus the nutrient profile of the flesh of the cucumber. So though, that we don't know. In theory, we think that we're getting concentrated forms of vitamins and minerals from the juice, but we don't really know. So with that being said, um, the pros of juicing is that you may get better absorption of nutrients because there is limited digestion. It's like drinking a glass of water. Um, your body really doesn't have to do a whole lot to absorb the nutrients. Um, it can be really beneficial to people that have swallowing problems um, or have issues maintaining food or keeping food down. Um, so that could be beneficial. And then certain juices have been shown to improve athletic uh, performance, specifically beet juice. Um, so beet juice increases the nitric oxide, the nitric oxide, sorry, I have something in my, on my foot. It's really annoying me. The nitric oxide, oxide, if I can say that damn word, good grief. I'm not even going to try again. It increases muscle performance. Let's just leave it at that. Um, so some cons is it lacks fiber. So we already know that it doesn't, uh, fiber helps to slow down digestion in the body so that we don't get this massive sugar spike and then a sugar drop off the cliff later on. So we don't have any fiber in a juice, which means that we're getting a massive sugar spike and a sugar drop off. So I would never, ever, ever in 100 years recommend a diabetic have a juice. Um, sugar crossing the teeth repeatedly can lead to increased decay. Um, it removes the process of chewing. So just like smoothies, removes the process of, chew of chewing. So you're not, you know, releasing the saliva in the mouth, starting the digestive enzyme release, getting the whole downward effect working. That's a child right there. I don't know if you saw him. That, that's that's one right there. Um, he likes to hide up in his room, as most kids do. As you're right there, I can. Um, Store-bought juices are pasteurized, and so when we pasteurize things, we reduce the nutrient content of them. So if you're purchasing, even when they say you know it's very minimally pasteurized. You're still reducing the nutrient profile of the supposed nutrients in there. Um, I think you just have to put that in the microwave. I don't think it's going to heat up there. I'm being shushed. Sorry. Back to my regularly scheduled program. Um, and then home juices can lose their nutrients. So the longer they're exposed to oxygen, oxygen can neutralize uh, the nutrients in food. So the longer it's exposed, the nutrients from the juice are exposed to oxygen, the less they're going to be. So um, really, if you're going to make a juice at home, you need to make it and consume it right away. Some people will say a juice, put it in your cup and then put it in the microwave. <laughs> I don't want you to melt that. Um, <laughs> So some people will say that if you use like a cold pressed juicer or a masticating juicer that you can keep them in the fridge for up to three days. Again, we don't really know any of this. Um, it's just kind of in theory. Um, and then there in juices, there is a lack of protein and fats. You can absolutely mix a juice with a protein powder to get that, um, get that there, but you're still not going to have the fat in there. If you are going to do a juice, you should make it like 95% vegetable juice with just a little bit of fruit. Usually lemon helps to neutralize any green or bitter taste. 
Um, apples tend to be pretty popular when it comes to juicing. So lots of greens, cucumber for the water base, and then an apple to kind of, you know, give it a little sweetness so it's not 100% disgusting. Um, so that's kind of it. So I gave you a beet and berry juice in the um, blog. Um, but for me, so primarily, I feel that if you're going to do smoothies or juices, smoothies are the way to go because, again, they retain their fiber. Um, we have a little bit better idea as far as nutrient profile of the smoothie because you are eating the flesh, you're eating the whole food versus, you know, pulling out the juice of that particular fruit or vegetable. Um, so that is really it. Again, so just to kind of summarize, we don't really know what's better. Um, in theory, we think that smoothies are probably better um, than juices, and uh, some people will say that juices are better than smoothies because they absorb faster, go straight to the body, and you get all the nutrients from it. But again, we don't really know what the nutrients in that smooth or in that juice is because we've never, you know, looked at a juice profile of specific foods. So there is that. Um, let's see if there are any questions. Nope. Nope. Nope, I answered that one from Melissa. So that's it. It was smoothies and juices. And that, let me tell you what we're talking about next week. Next week, we are chatting. Ooh, soy. So next week, we're going to talk all about soy and look at the different myths, look at the research, and determine is soy good? Or is it bad? There's a lot of stuff floating out on the internet in reference to soy. Um, so that's what we'll talk about next Tuesday, and I will see you then. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs>